Uh, Ms. Paula Bradshaw has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Health. I would remind members if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Health what actions he intends to take to commission abortion services in Northern Ireland in line with CEDAW recommendations, as must be provided in law under Section 9 of the Northern Ireland Executive Formation etc. Act 2019. And I call the Minister of Health. Um, thank you, Speaker. Um, in April 2020, my department invited the Executive to give its agreement to explore options to see whether it is possible to put in place some limited measure to access uh, to a commissioned early medical abortion service in Northern Ireland during the COVID-19 emergency. This proposal aimed to mitigate the travel restrictions preventing one from Northern Ireland accessing the abortion service available in England. The Executive did not agree to my Department's proposal. My Department resubmitted this proposal to the Executive in May 2020, and I wrote to the Executive Office on the 26th of November 2020 to request an update. As the Executive has not agreed to this proposal, no further work has been taken forward by my Department. Supplementary, Paul Bradshaw. Um, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, Minister, um, in the Health and Social Care Bill papers that were provided by your Department, it very clearly states that commissioning is not a cross-cutting matter. Um, you have used this excuse on numerous occasions as to why you, were bring, you brought it to the Executive. Can you please outline how it is a cross-cutting matter? But also, um, there is an accusation that you were bringing these proposals to the Executive because you believed or you knew that they would be blocked by the DUP. And we see, therefore, that the, the FOI that came out at the weekend there that um, during the, the travel ban, as you um, outlined there, that the people would prefer to put women at risk of travelling during a pandemic than provide them with health care services here. Could you please respond to those accusations that people in the general public are levying at you, please? Thank you. Um, and I thank the member as well. And again, uh, those ac accusations are unfounded. Um, and I think it's not just the general public that are making those accusations, but also the member uh, at times in regards to making, trying to make this issue very personal uh, in regards to how I view this specific uh, issue. In regards to the cross-cutting nature um, of the commissioning of abortion in Northern Ireland, my department does not dispute that women in Northern Ireland are legally entitled to abortion services. The legal advice received by my department states that the Abortion Northern Ireland Regulations 2020 do not require my department to commission the relevant services. Registered medical professions can now terminate pregnancies lawfully. Such terminations subject to the regulations are to be carried out by the health and social care on the health and social care premises. In order to get to the, the position where my department could issue a commissioning direction, as the member is aware, and in furtherance of legal advice, I brought a paper to the Executive on the 3rd of April providing options for the establishment of an early medical abortion service in Northern Ireland. My department resubmitted this proposal to the Executive in May, and as I say again, I wrote to the Executive in November. As yet, no decision has been taken by the Executive, and therefore there is no commission service for abortion in Northern Ireland. I am satisfied that I have executed my duty as Health Minister by bringing this matter under the terms of the Ministerial Code to the Executive to discuss and agree and I stand by my view that the Commission of Abortion Services could be considered as significant or controversial and outside the scope of the programme for government. The Commission of this service would also seem to cut across the human rights responsibilities of the First and Deputy First Minister. In view of this, I am obliged, under the Ministerial Code, to bring this matter to the Executive to discuss and agree before the matter can be proceeded. Bob Palm Cameron. Mr Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer so far. The DUP is a, a pro-life party focused on saving lives, not on taking them. The commissioning of abortion services is a cross-cutting matter. Indeed, there is nothing more controversial than this particular topic. It is quite ironic that Sinn Féin, whose MPs can't even be bothered to take their seats at Westminster, seem happy to rely on UK ministers to implement their oppressive abortion agenda. Could I ask the Minister if he agrees that those who advocate for the commissioning of radical abortion services without any robust scrutiny and due process are showing deep contempt for devolution and for the need for consensus. Um, 
I thank the member for, for her comments and obviously those of her party uh, and herself. But as I say, I am uh, of the view that this matter uh, is cross-cutting, is controversial, and therefore must be taken forward by the executive uh, in the first instance before any proposal of commissioner or service could be taken any further. I call her, um, uh, Emma Sheeran. Ken Corley, I thank the Minister for his earlier answers. Minister, you have repeatedly said that you are not going to commission these services. Can I ask what you would say to the women who are being forced to travel to England in the middle of a global health pandemic to access health services that they are entitled to under the law at home? And I thank the member, and again I want to correct her because she said I, I have said I will not commission these services. She's wrong in saying that. What I am I am not a liar, no matter what the member says. I have said, I have said, I, I have never said I will not commission these services. What I have said is I have a duty as Minister of Health to bring any proposal to the executive in regards uh, to the commission of services, because I consider this matter to be cross-cutting, controversial, and under ministerial code, I must do that to meet my legal obligations. Well, Matthew O'Toole. Speaker, um, Minister, it would be helpful to understand precisely what your position is. If I understand you correctly, you are saying the last time you brought the paper to the Executive was in November. If you could address that, first of all. Secondly, could you, since you have clarified that abortion services are legal in Northern Ireland now, could you advise what a woman should do who is in that position of needing to access those health care services? As of today, what should she be doing? Um, uh, and to access those services from your perspective? In regards to the, the, the access of those services, those, those services are not illegal. Those services are being performed um, across, the Northern, uh, sorry, across all the trusts in Northern Ireland. And should, uh, should a woman want to access uh, abortion services, she can contact her GP uh, in the first instance or informing choices as well. Because in regards to the provision uh, of abortion services in Northern Ireland, they are not illegal. They are being carried out by health profes professionals. It is just the, the commissioning of a full, uh, comprehensive abortion service in Northern Ireland that still has to be referred to and agreed by the executive. I call Claire Bailey. Thank you, Speaker, um, and thank you, Minister, for making yourself available today. Um, we know that women trying to access services are either being forced to travel during the pandemic or those who can access the very limited services here are running the gauntlet of protests, um, in some cases from people who are travelling for their right to protest. Um, during the pandemic. But in some of those cases, we have seen protesters enter um, uh, health clinics, we have seen them enter uh, premises, they have seen them blocking access, we have seen them standing on the steps of hospitals. Minister, this is a deliberate attempt to prevent women from accessing those services. Have you anything to say to those both protesting and can you do anything to ensure safe access to the very limited services that do exist for women? Um, I, I would agree uh, with the member there should be no obstruction. Uh, to anyone wanting to access health service, whether it is um, commissioned uh, or not. So those who um, have used their legal right to, to protest, or, as the members indicated, should not be obstructing entry or interfering with any individual who wants to enter a health care facility to seek uh, any health care provision that they may want to. Well, Jonathan Buckley. Does the Minister agree that the intervention by the UK government is an unacceptable breach of the devolution settlement and that this matter is for the Northern Ireland and Assembly and Executive to deal with. And has he made this point robustly known to the Secretary of State? Um, I, I have spoken to the Secretary of State and Junior Minister Robin Walker in regards to this uh, specific issue and in regards to what I believe is a devolved matter. Uh, I have I've said that, I have said that publicly, and I have said that in this House. But it is also a matter that must be brought uh, before the Executive and agreed, because it is cross-cutting and controversial, as some of the commentary already uh, delivered here today in this House shows. And if I did proceed, uh, should I want to proceed with this matter, uh, I would find myself in breach of the Ministerial Code and open to legal challenge, as would any adoption of a service. 
Call Liz Kimmins. Can call and thank the Minister for his answer so far. Minister, as you'll know, I raised the, this issue last week around the protests um, outside John Mitchell Place in Newry, and I've, I've been engaging with quite a number of agencies over the last um, week or so on this. Minister, can you advise what engagement you've had with clinicians and the chief executives of the trusts across the north, um, all of whom are currently trying to deliver services under the law with, without any framework of what they should be providing or support from the department? Um, particularly the Southern Trust in Uri, who are dealing with quite a, a difficult issue um, around protesters outside that clinic, which provides a range of services um, for, for all sorts of reasons. And many vulnerable women and children are facing um, a really challenging situation, as our staff, many of whom have been in touch with me, um, and, and the impact it is having on their daily lives. And in, in regards to an earlier answer, I, I, I would say nobody should judge anyone entering a, a health facility and why they're entering it. And I think that's wrong. And then the protesters that are outside it are doing a disservice uh, to the staff working in it, and also those individuals uh, seeking to, to gain medical support and advice. And I would ask them to desist uh, from doing that uh, until this uh, issue is resolved through proper democratic uh, scrutiny and accountability. I call Jim Allister. Um, the Minister will be aware that this present absurd system of devolution that we have was sold to many in the pro-life lobby on the basis that it guaranteed control over issues such as abortion. Now that that lamentably is not so, what value for those such people is there in devolution? I think the, the member um, makes a valid point and has raised a question that is many heads and hearts uh, across Northern Ireland at this minute in time. But what I would say to them, if this place wasn't here, uh, Westminster would have a free hand in regards to doing whatever um, it, it wanted to do. But what I would say to the member as well, um, we'll wait to see what the Secretary of State does bring forward in regards to his proposals, as, as of yet um, I haven't seen anything. Well, Jerry Carl. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Minister, for his answers. The reality is, though, uh, Minister, that uh, you're failing women and their health care by refusing the act of the legislation implemented at Westminster doesn't require you to bring it to the executive. That's a political choice that you have uh, made, and many are, are opposed to it. And given that you do have the, the power to act uh, but refuse to do so, why women's mental health is at risk, many are reporting to be suicidal because they can't get access to terminations. Does the minister not regret, not regret therefore, not implementing and uh, making these services available to women here? The member again um, tries to make a political point by making it personal, uh, and I regret that. As I said in my initial answer, uh, this issue is cross cutting, it is controversial, and therefore it is part of the ministerial code that I must bring it to the executive to discuss and agree. So, any commissioning uh, of services which would seem to be uh, outside that remit and also outside the programme for government uh, would be open to challenge, as would I, for breaking the ministerial code. So I, I would ask the member not try to, to, to take this issue on this political and medical merits rather than trying to personalise it in regards to my position on it. That concludes uh, this item of business. Thank you all. Point of order. Um, the minister accused me of calling him a liar. Can I put it on the record that I did not call him a liar? All I said was that he had repeatedly said that he wouldn't commission the services. He went back then to say that it wasn't his responsibility, that this is a cross-cutting uh, matter, and that it was for the executive to do so. Okay, thank you. Your marks are on the record. Point of order, Jerry Carl. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the minister uh, stated or certainly indicated that I was making this personal. I was merely stating the facts uh, of the situation, so I would like to be noted that I wasn't making this personal and merely okay, uh, noting his uh, lack of action. Your point this made. I will have to. Okay, Minister, just to take briefly, please. Thank you. In regards to Mr. Carl, he can read his own contributions in Hansard, where he did make it very personal. In regards to Ms. Sharon, uh, I, I, I saw her speak from a sedentary position. I assumed what she said. I, and if I, if I misheard or misread what the members say, I will apologise to her. But Thanks, and, Minister. And, and I will do that. But um, I think I saw what the member said. But I'll apologise if it was wrong. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, as I said, that concludes that item of business. And uh, could members take a raise for a moment or two to be moved on to the next item? Thank you.